For those of you who don't know me, my name is Michelle and I am the founder of the TravNav, which is a luxury travel blog. And today we're going to be go ahead, I'm going to go ahead and talk about um, the Double Tree cookie recipe. And for those of you who aren't familiar, um, the Double Tree has these amazing, gooey, just delicious cookies. But before we get um, into baking, I just want to take a minute to tell you a little bit about the TravNav. I started the TravNav um, about a year ago, and I love traveling. I love anything that has to do with traveling, the actual traveling. I love um, going on the vacations and writing about it and sharing all my experiences. And at the TravNav, um, I provide you with information about luxury hotels, tips and tricks about what to do when you're on vacation, things to do, pitfalls, pitfalls to avoid because sometimes it happens. Um, not, no vacation is absolutely perfect, so I try to give you information about um, how to avoid some of the mistakes, frankly, that I've made. Um, but also just great destinations to travel to. Let's, uh, let's get started with um, baking. So today I decided to share with you the recipe for um, the signature cookies from the Double Tree because a lot of us aren't traveling right now and I wanted to be able to bring a little bit of vacation um, to your home and to mine. So I'm at home in my kitchen today and I thought it'd be fun to try um, baking the Double Tree signature cookie recipe. You're going to have to bear with me though because I've never done this before so um, I'm going to do my best. I tried to measure out a bunch of the ingredients beforehand so that this would be um, a quicker process because uh, generally I'm a very slow baker and that could be really boring. So um, without further ado, uh, let's get started. Okay, so I have the, the recipe right here and just so you know, this recipe makes 26 cookies which seems like a lot, but you know, we get hungry. Um, but what's great about the recipe is that you can also freeze um, some of the unbaked um, cookie dough. And so you can, you know, pop it in your oven um, as you go along and have fresh baked cookies. So I'm excited about that. Okay, so the first thing that we have to do is we have to cream the butter, sugar, and brown sugar. Um, and for those of you who are new to cooking, um, it to, just to cream the products just basically means to mix the butter and sugar together on a moderately high speed until well blended. So it's supposed to be really fluffy. Um, so in this case, you're supposed to take softened butter. So I put mine um, in the microwave for just a few seconds because it wasn't quite soft enough. Um, you're going to use two sticks of butter. So fair warning, this recipe is not healthy, but it is really, really good and totally worth it. So I'm going to take my two sticks of butter and I'm going to put it in my mix master. Just drop it in there. All right, so we have our butter. Um, and then I'm going to take my three-fourths cup of sugar, which I've already measured up here, um, and drop that in. You can see like sugar and dust flying around. Um, and then I'm also going to take the three-fourths cup of um, brown sugar um, that I previously measured out. So here's our brown sugar. I'm using the pure cane sugar, this brown sugar, which you just get in your regular market. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and dump that in. All right, so now that that's going, um, set this on. Okay, so now our butter and sugar are mixing. I do have um, sugar flying everywhere, so it's probably just uh, my uh, lack of um, experience making cookies from scratch. Sometimes I just make them from the box, so I'm excited to try something new today. This looks good, so unleash the mixture. See if I can fight with it to release it a little bit. Here we go. So it's coming together nicely. So the next thing that we have to do um, on our recipe for the Double Tree cookies is to add eggs, vanilla, and lemon juice. So it'll be two eggs. So I have my trusty two eggs right here. Um, so I'll go ahead and crack those in. second egg, so I put those in. Um, I added the vanilla, which I've already measured out, so it's right here, which is, in this case, it's uh, one and fourth teaspoons of vanilla, so I'll add in the vanilla. And I created this like nice little bowl for like all my trash. I'm pretending that I'm Rachel Ray today, so she puts all her stuff in one place, so I'm doing the same. Okay, so now I have 
the eggs, the vanilla, ah, the lemon juice. Um, what I do with the lemons is I just kind of roll them on a cutting board first just to try to get the juice, um, the juices released. So I'm doing that. Um, and then I'll just slice it in half. And I don't need that much lemon juice in this case. Um, I didn't realize that these cookies had lemon juice in them. I was actually kind of surprised. Um, so I take out my trusty juicer. And like I said, I don't need that much juice. You only need, in this case, uh, a fourth of a teaspoon, so not much at all. So in order not to get extra juice everywhere, so I'll take um, my measuring spoon and I put it over a cutting board and I'm gonna drop, you can't see it here, I'm sorry. But I'm basically dropping the tablespoon in the cup so that when I squeeze the lemon juice, I don't get the lemon juice everywhere. It all gets, um, it all just goes straight in the tablespoon. Okay. So I have lots of lemon juice and I squeeze the lemon. So now I'm going to take the fourth tablespoon of my lemon juice and add it to my mixer. So that happened to work smoothly, so that's great. So I've got my lemon in. So now I'm gonna blend the mixture on a low speed for 30 seconds, it says. All right, so that's blending. So I'll just give you um, just some quick information about how I came across um, the Double Tree Resorts. So when I was traveling for business, um, I used to practice law and I traveled um, a little bit around um, California predominantly when I was practicing and I'd check myself into uh, different hotels. Sometimes um, they would be a double tree. And my favorite part about the double tree was always the check-in process. I always had my head elsewhere. I was thinking about the deposition that I was gonna be taking or defending or the court appearance I had coming up or the client meeting that I was about to have. Um, and so the last thing that like I was really focused on, um, frankly, was like the check-in process. But without fail, every single time I checked in, they'd hand you a cookie and the cookie would be so warm and so delicious. I couldn't wait till I got to my room. I always took a bite like as I was walking away and it just for just even a couple seconds like it just helps at least me helped relax me um, and calm me because it's really like transported to a totally different place just taking a bite of the cookie it's just so good. So that's how I came across um, the Double Tree and these delicious cookies. So here I am, and let's see, I think we've mixed this, this part enough. Um, so now it's light and fluffy. So it tells me that the next thing I should do with my trusty spoon is to scrape down the bowl. So I'm gonna go ahead and release the mix master, um, scrape down the bowl, scrape some of the stuff, off, some of the mixture off the mixing pan, and just give it one more quick little um, mix because it's looking a little watery and I don't want that. Okay, so I think we're good now on that particular portion. So the next thing that we get to do um, on our cooking, as we're cooking this signature double tree cookies, um, wait, hold on, I gotta find my next page. For some reason it's not in order, that's always fun. Okay, here we go. So with the mixer on a low speed, I'm gonna add flour, oats, baking soda, salt, cinnamon, and then we're gonna blend for about another 45 seconds, okay? So I have my flour, so that's here. I already measured it out. Um, I'm, I'm very excited about the cookies too. I'm glad you guys are. <laughs> okay, so here's my flour. So I'm pouring my flour in, and I'm gonna pour it in slowly so that frankly I don't get like flour all over my house. Um, so very slowly I'm gonna pour the flour in because it's a lot of flour. It's like two and a fourth cups of flour, I think, if I, measure, if I remember correctly from the measuring. So it's a lot of flour. So what I'm gonna do is so that it doesn't go everywhere, I'm just gonna start that on a very low speed just to get it to start mixing in so that, that way I have more room for the rest of the ingredients. Um, okay, so now I have the flour going, so I'm gonna stop that. I have um, a half a cup of rolled oats. Thank you, uh, Jen, for providing the rolled oats. So I have my rolled oats here. I'm gonna drop those in. So we're done with the rolled oats. The next thing I need is baking soda. So I just use your regular like baking soda from the market. You can get it at Bed Bath & Beyond too. So I already pre-measured. It's not that much, but it was easier to put in the um, measuring cup. So I'm gonna drop in my baking soda. I need just a pinch of salt, so I'll take out um, just a little bit of salt so I can add that in. 
And the last thing that I'm going to need for this part of the process is cinnamon. So I've got just a little cinnamon to just put in like a dash of cinnamon, because that's just as a pinch. Maybe a little bit more. Okay, that's more than enough cinnamon. So now I'm going to mix all of this for about 45 seconds. It's telling me not to overmix, um, but we'll see how it goes, because I don't know. 45 seconds isn't that there, isn't that long, but it's mixing quite, it's, it's looking good. Here, I can show you what it looks like. So I'm taking you along. So this is what it looks like. I think it's going pretty well in the mix master. I think this is what cookie dough is supposed to look like, so I'm very excited. The reason why I'm making these cookies is so that um, I can give them to my husband tomorrow. He's going to be totally surprised, which I'm very excited about. Um, he loves chocolate chip cookies. It's like literally one of his favorite things in the entire world. So he doesn't know that I'm doing this live right now, so if you're friends with him, don't tell him because that way he'll have the surprise tomorrow. Okay, I think we're done mixing. So the next thing we're supposed to do is remove the bowl from the mixer and stir in the chocolate chips. Okay, like I said before, this recipe is not healthy. So this is the amount of chocolate chips that I'll be putting into um, the mixing bowl. So this was two and two thirds cups of chocolate chips. I used the Nestle's Toll House, um, the semi-sweet ones. So it's, these are the chocolate chips that I used. Um, so, yep, here we go. Lots of chocolate chips, and they are delicious. I had a few to snack on, too. So I'm going to drop those in. It's a lot of chocolate chips. And then you're also supposed to use chopped walnuts. So I have um, the walnuts here, but mine were only in pieces, not chopped. So what I did is I um, put them in a plastic bag, and then I just bang them um, against the countertop, and it generally works pretty well. Just another way to try something different. Um, so now I have my trusty bag of chopped walnuts, so I'm going to add those in. Alright, so now I've got the walnuts going, except for my batter, which I don't know if you can exactly see. There you go. So the batter um, got stuck to the mixing part, so I'm just going to try and get all of this off while I go ahead and try to mix in um, all the other stuff. It says not to use, it says to remove from the mixer, but there's just, it's very thick in here. So I'm going to just try to do this just a, whoa, I see why. Just a little bit because, whoa, my mixer was just possessed. Um, so I forgot to lock it. Don't forget to lock your mixer. So I locked it so it doesn't move as much. Um, because the batter is really thick and there's so much stuff in here, um, the mixer doesn't really like it. So I can see why it says not to use, um, not to use the mixer. And we also don't want all of the chocolate chips and all of the yummy goodness uh, falling into um, on the counter because then that would just be a waste. He wants all this goodness to go to waste. So, okay, so now I am almost done putting all of the cookies, the cookie batter back into the bowl where I belong. Oh, this is the really fun part. Okay. So we can remove um, the dough from the bowl and put it on a lined baking sheet with parchment paper. I'm excited about these double treat cookies as much as I am. Um, it's, they're just gonna be like so amazing. At least fingers crossed, I hope. Okay, so what it says is to do is to take about three tablespoons um, for each cookie. So I have tablespoon here um, and I'm gonna measure it out so that, that way I can figure out generally what a tablespoon is. So I'm gonna open up the drawer pull out an ice cream scooper, which I think is going to be about three tablespoons. So here we go. So, oh, no, I'm very wrong. The ice cream scooper is a tablespoon. Huh. Three tablespoons is a very large cookie. Um, let's try two tablespoons and see what happens. I know I'm messing up like the exact recipe, but three tablespoons seems huge. Okay, here we go. So dropping this down, wow, these cookies are going to be like massive. Okay, I think, and Devil Tree will probably correct me and tell me that I'm totally wrong, um, but I think we should probably try to do more like a tablespoon. Okay, back to the cookies. So here we are. So I'm going to go ahead and just do the scoops. I don't know about you, but I don't mind having lots of, whoops, I'll have to pick that up lots of cookies um, and it can always go back for more, right? So even if 
your first cookie um, seems small, then you could just go back and you could just keep, you know, get off the couch and get another one if you're still hungry. That's the way I like to do it. Um, if I give myself too big of a cookie, then I will just literally eat the whole thing at one time. So it's like, eh, maybe take a step back from like the large cookie and go with the small one first and then just keep eating until you're full. Okay, so now I have the cookies going. Wow, I did not realize. Okay, so this, it does say 26 cookies. So like, this is a very large amount of batter. Just so much batter. Um, but I think, I really do think it's going to be delicious. I'm pretty excited about this. So for those of you who have traveled, um, is there anything that you've done um, that you think can think of that you could bring like the taste of home with you? So like I'm bringing the double tree cookies um, back to my house, but I'm wondering if like you've been on an adventure or you've been on a great vacation and you think to yourself, oh wow, like I wish I could do this at home. And then you are able to do it. Is there like a scent, like for a candle that you love or cookies? I've also done, in addition to these cookies, I. Um, you know, I've also stayed at a hotel where I like, my husband just loved the salsa, thought it was just absolutely amazing. And so I reached out to the hotel and I told them, this is the St. Regis and Punamita, and I said, hey, look, you know, my husband thinks that like your salsa is just like the best thing since sliced bread. And I asked if I could have the recipe and they were kind enough to send it to me. So um, if there's something you really love at a hotel, don't be shy, reach out and ask. Um, and oftentimes they will um, give you that information. You know, the double tree cookie recipe was obviously um, like a trade secret for a very long time, but you know, they released it. Um, the St. Regis gave me the recipe for their habanero salsa, which was like the simplest recipe of all time. So, and the most delicious if you like super spicy salsa. So it's really great in the sense that you know, even if we're at home and we're not traveling right now, you can still find ways to bring travel home with you. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to continue to line my sheet, my cookie sheet, um, with these cookies. Um, it says that the cookies are supposed to take um, 20 to 23 minutes. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna finish this up. I'm gonna pop it back in the oven. What I'm gonna do now is I'm just about to take them out of the oven so you, that you can see what they look like. Um, and then I'll crack one open so you can see the, hopefully the ooey gooey center. The cookies ended up um, coming out extremely large. So they ended up being just one ice cream scoop full. Um, and that's definitely large en a large enough cookie and I'll show you. So hold on one sec, let me just open up the oven and take them out and then I can show you and tell you a little bit more about the cookies. Okay, one sec. We don't need a towel on the floor, so I will put those over there for now. Okay. So I did make a large batch of cookies. Um, so this is what the cookies look like. You can tell that they are they are definitely large. The recipe said three tablespoons. These are the equivalent of one tablespoon. So you, I think you'd be making more of a cake if you use the three tablespoons. Um, but this is how much one tablespoon is. So let me pull out the two other trays so they don't overbake, and then I'll come right back. The cookies uh, look delicious, and they were really fun to make. And I just wanted to bring a little sense of um, vacation back to my house. So without further ado, I'm very excited to show you the double tree cookies. So I have one here. I'm cutting into the center. Okay, well this is why you don't do things live, because sometimes your cookies just aren't finished. Um, in this case, the cookie's almost done, but it probably needs another couple minutes, um, and let me show you why. Cookies, it's like this ooey gooey, like delicious center, but it's not holding together as well as I would have liked. Um, but I'm looking forward to trying them, and I'm sure it's gonna be delicious. Just a little nervous that the cookie itself will just completely break apart if I lift up the whole thing. But here goes my little taste test. Mmm. Okay. The cookie is delicious. And it's as good as I remember from being at the Double Tree. Um, I do have a suggestion, even though it says cook for 20 to 23 minutes, um, based upon my experience, you probably need more like 27 minutes. Because it's supposed to be like golden, the cookies are supposed to be golden on the kind of outside and obviously they're not supposed to fall apart like mine are. Um, there also may have been some user error along the way as to why the cookies are not sticking together as much as I would have liked. 
um, but they are um, but they are really good. So I hope that you check out um, the Double Tree uh, cookie recipe and um, let me know if there's a recipe that you suggest that I try um, and I can do another live here where I can go through and um, show everyone how that recipe is made, particularly if it's from a hotel or a restaurant that you've been to um, on a vacation or through your travels where you think, hey, this is amazing. I think everyone should try this and it's just kind of like a preview to a destination that you want to go to. So since the um, trash uh, man is coming through, it's going to get very, very loud here any moment. So before that happens, I'm going to sign off. But I want to say thank you so much. It's been really fun today. And uh, check out my travel blog at thetravnav.com. And I hope to see you soon. Bye.